All right, guys, we are at Robinson Helicopter Factory here in Torrance, California. We are at the mothership. We're having a great time. We're going to be doing the R66 safety course. We're doing some in-helicopter podcasts. This building is massive. To my right, all I can see is the factory. And to my left, all I can see is the factory. So excited. Let's go take a look. So this week at the safety course, I can expect a really strong refresher on aerodynamic hazards, uh, decision making, proper uh, pre-flight planning and the importance of planning and getting to come to the OEM and have them reinforce these things that we know, but then also put meaning behind it. You know, talk about mass bumping, but then also talk about the accidents and how they've occurred. Talk about low RPM and how pilots are getting into that situation with improper energy management or whatever it may be. The OEM courses are such a great place for you to come refine your skill and become a better and safer pilot, especially if you're operating the aircraft that they manufacture. I think a highlight of the Robinson safety course is on day two, they split the class up into smaller groups and you actually get a guided tour of the factory. You get to see not only how large this facility is, I mean, it's giant, but you also get to see the men and women uh, all in their workstations, putting these helicopters together. You get to see the engineering that goes into constructing these, the workmanship. It's really awe-inspiring for someone that flies these aircraft, being able to go in that factory, which is extremely clean, extremely well-organized, really makes you understand the pride that these men and women take in putting these helicopters together. Again, I think I speak for the entire class. The day two factory tour was certainly a highlight. In addition to doing the group factory tour, I was lucky enough to meet with Jim. Jim has been with Robinson for 36 years. That's like 14 years shy of when the company started. In fact, for a large portion of his time at Robinson, he directly reported to Frank. So I was lucky enough to do a one-on-one -on -one factory tour. It was a little bit later in the evening, so the factory was kind of quiet compared to earlier in the day when we took the uh, class tour. And this was just a really neat experience to be able to walk around the factory, chat with Jim, and really get a sense of not only his pride, but just the collective pride of the employees at Robinson that are working in the factory, the guys and gals that are engineering these helicopters, the guys and gals that are building these helicopters. So let's check in with Jim. This tour was super cool. Halsey, Robinson's whole philosophy is to be as self-contained in the manufacturing as possible. Thus, we have a huge machine shop. So one of the features of Robinson is we're running uh, I believe it's eight of these water jet cutting machines and it basically uses water mixed with a garnet pumice okay. to cut metal. And so we use this to cut all, all these aluminum parts. Um, we, we stack up about three quarters of an inch and we cut. It shoots out a spray, which is less than a 32nd of an inch up to 50,000 PSI. Wow. And so it's very efficient. It cuts all the holes out. There's very little to deburr. It gets rid of all uh, drill templates and everything is really efficient way to do things. Here we have these massive jigs that are used for the for the final assembly of the of what we call the fuselage or the cabin. And as we add components, which are built in different parts of the building here, we keep adding them. And as we add them up, we keep adding tooling to keep and hold the, the fuselage in place rigidly. Mm -hmm. So as it goes up, we don't want to have the cabin drift and move on us. Sure. So you've been here for a long time you've got to kind of see the factory grow. Well, the factory originally was on the other side of the airport <laughs> in a facility that was probably about an eighth of this size when, <laughs> when I started. And we just expanded over time, moved across the way. We put one building up, then we put this as number two building. And then in 2010, we put up number three building. And has it always been the mindset from the beginning of trying to produce as much in-house? Yes. Or did it just kind of come over necessity of time? 
Um, we started out trying to produce what we could afford to produce in-house, uh -huh. in terms of machine tools and everything else. And over time, we found that we had problems with stuff. and says, what can we bring in? Sure. And what can we control the cost better? Yeah. And over time, it kept growing and growing as we find more. As we expand and our product is much larger in terms of sales, we could justify bringing in other equipment. You can. When Frank started out, he didn't have a lot of money. So he had to figure out how to build tail cones and do it cost effectively. Sure. So what he did is he came up with a tail cone that has all these sections in it. And each section is about the length of an arm so that you can reach in there and you can buck all these rivets. You can do it all. Yep. And so every tail cone from the 22 to the 44 is designed the same way. Isn't it crazy? Like just the, the necessity yes. of, and, of the design. And the uniqueness of it is if a tail cone comes back in and it's damaged, we can disassemble the tail cone, replace that section, and reassemble it, That's, and it and retains its uh, total TBO time between overhaul. One of the folklores I've heard about Robinson, maybe you can tell me if this is true or not, but I know that the heat treating originally done on the tail rotor blade for the R22. Yes. Uh, I've been told that the size of the tail rotor blade is because of that was what would fit in Frank's oven. At home, it's true. That's a true story. It's a true story. Frank has told me that himself. <laughs>
My name is Brad Bro. I fly for uh, Aviation Academy of Louisiana in New Iberia, Louisiana. I'm just under a thousand hours in total time. Most of that now is in helicopters. I started out flying airplanes first, but whenever I was able to afford flying helicopters, I I paid for flight training. The reason why I decided to attend the uh, Robinson Safety Course is I had attended the R44 course in December of 22. It was very beneficial and got a lot of good knowledge from the 44 course and kind of want to be able to understand the systems, how they operate, get some additional time. I've flown in the R66 a very little amount of time, so I wanted to have some additional time in. And also the way they run the course, it's great for understanding emergency procedures you know, what's the capabilities of the aircraft and how really to, you know, kind of push yourself to, to make sure that you can do the maneuvers efficiently and safely. So we, we recommend all of our clients come to the safety course. We recommend it just because we've seen the benefit of it ourselves. And so we want them to be better pilots. So as we sell helicopters, typically if they're lower time pilots, first time owners, first time pilots, private pilots, it's written in their sale agreement that they come and, and attend the safety course before they carry any passengers. My name is Amber Garrison. So I started flying back in probably 2018. I have about 500 hours now. I've got mostly Robinson time. So I've got 44, 22, uh, some 66 time. I also, uh, really love going on helicopter adventures around the world. And so I've got some good time uh, down in Guatemala flying A-Stars, EC-120, EC-130. Despite not uh, working commercially as a helicopter pilot, uh, I still felt like this would have a lot of value for me personally. Um, being a recreational pilot, uh, you know, I, I get out as much as I can, but I'm not doing this every day as part of my profession. So I feel like it's probably more important for people like me <laughs> um, to, to attend events like this, where you're really getting an in-depth in -depth knowledge of the aircraft, emergency procedures, um, and, and really just keeping yourself fresh and sharp. And so it just makes me a better pilot. I got to fly with Carl. Um, and we started out the flight doing a couple of hover autos. I was really surprised um, just only because I've, I've never done any auto rotations in a, in a turbine helicopter, um, but it was very like smooth and easy and gentle. Um, but I definitely felt, you know, Carl was there to really explain things to me and show and, and um, he was obviously on the controls with me. So I felt very comfortable doing it. Um, and then we flew down to Compton Airport and we, we did some uh, straight in auto rotations and 180 auto rotations. And then he was able to show me kind of a slow speed auto rotation, which was pretty cool. Um, again, my first time doing um, auto rotations in a turbine. Uh, so that was definitely a different experience, but same principles in theory. Um, yeah. And then we headed back this way and we did some Vortex ring state recovery, which is typically historically my least favorite maneuver ever, <laughs> just because it's very like jarring. But um, but we were able to work on uh, more of a Bichard recovery, uh, and it was pretty darn smooth. I I think that I would probably tell others in the industry that even if it feels like you know everything, you you definitely don't. <laughs> You're going to get some new nugget of wisdom from the safety course. Um, and even that one little, even if it's one little nugget, like that little nugget can save your life. You know, and whether you're a professional pilot and you do this every day, or whether you're, um, you know, just, just a lover of helicopters like me, um, it's really important to make sure that you stay on top of things and stay up to date with the latest recovery techniques or the latest, um, you know, processes or, oh, this new piece of technology that, that you can use and it could help in this situation. Um, I just think it's important, you know, if you're thinking about continuous education, which we should always be thinking about continuous education as pilots, um, it's, it's priceless to be able to learn it from the people who actually built and tested and know these aircraft inside and out.
My name is Ryan Trout. I currently work for a company called Heliflight. We're based in uh, Ardmore Airport in Auckland, New Zealand. Uh, currently a flight instructor with them with uh, coming up to 2,800 hours. A uh, majority of it have definitely been the Robinson fleet. Probably half and half between the 22 and the 44, but very little time in the 66. The main point for me was to come and learn how Robinson are teaching Robinson safety training. I teach Robinson Safety Awareness courses in New Zealand, uh, but over the years, um, as I've learned on this course, some of the content of that has changed. Robinson's um, sort of made some of the contact more simpler for low time private pilots, as opposed to like, overwhelming them with information overload. So it's been good to come here and chat to the ground instructors and the, the flight instructors um, about some differences between the two, and we can hopefully get ourselves on the same page. So for SFAS 73, we had to look at a um, various range of auto rotations. Uh, we also looked at a bit of low RPM recovery and vortex ring stat. Um, as an instructor, it was good to chew the fat with the other guy. Sharing techniques, what do students sometimes struggle with? How can you address those issues? Um, I picked up a few different uh, training techniques myself, also some of the terminology he used. I'll be taking that back to New Zealand. I think a lot of pilots out there know that you don't know what you don't know and you're always learning. So as long as you're open to that, you should be uh, willing to accept going to factories, going to manufacturers, flying with other instructors in different places around the world. You're always going to get something away from that. Stein, seal, deliver. That is a wrap on the R66 factory training course down here in Torrance, California. I had such a blast. Some of the things that I wasn't anticipating was the attendees. Uh, everyone in my class brought a different level of experience, the different background of flying. And it was really fun to connect with those uh, guys and gals, learn about them, learn about their experiences. And some of the group discussion that we had during the class was uh, probably one of the most valuable things. There's, there's so many ways to skin a cat per se, right? And so to be able to have these thought provoking discussions on safety and different hazards and different things that we talked about during the class was uh, so informative. Uh, additionally, being able to break down each hazard and then see how that hazard has occurred within the Robinson fleet. And it's pretty astounding. Uh, and it's sad to say that nearly 90% of the accidents that we're seeing, not just in Robinson aircraft, but just all civil helicopters is pilot air. So I think we all have a responsibility to really bring a higher level of professionalism into the cockpit. And that's one of my biggest takeaways. I had such a great time. Big thanks to everyone at Robinson for inviting me down to the R66 safety course. Mm -hmm.